from Honolulu, Hawaii, the Royal Hawaiian. Pineapple head, yeah, that's me. The fans know it, it's no mystery. I'm bad, I'm cool, yes, I'm rough. You better be aware, I know my stuff. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to the Mike Grand Show. Today, my special guest is from Glow, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, the Royal Hawaiian. Hi, aloha. Aloha, welcome aloha. to the show. Thanks, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to have you on here. Thanks you for having me. The first bad girl champion of Glow. Yes, I sure was. And today we're going to spend some time talking to you. So we're, we're going to start with the question that a lot of fans are going to have is, you know, basically, how did you get into GLOW? Well, um, I was pursuing acting. So I was an actress, model, dancer, and I was working in Hollywood at the time. And um, my agent was right across the hall from where I worked in the office that I worked in. And um, he was partners with um, Jeff Bridges. It was Todd Bridges' dad from Different Strokes, and my um, agent was um, Bob Yanez, and they were partners. So um, they came across the hall and, and said, hey, we got a call for this show, and the audition's just right down the street in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard at the Hyatt Hotel. And they're like, are you interested? Do you want to go? Because they're asking for all kind of different girls all ethnicities and if you have any athletic background it would be helpful so i said what the heck so i worked for um, a secretarial um, office and my boss was very flexible with me so she would let me go to auditions come back and you know make up the time or just lose the hours but she was so great so i said yes what the heck so i ended up leaving and i went over uh, to the hyatt and this was the audition the first glow audition and hollywood and i were both this first audition and um, there was like a thousand girls and basically, um, you know, there were models, actresses, dancers, singers, cheerleaders, um, everything you can think of, just plain, you know, everyday girls, every walk of life, every ethnicity. And, um, and then they said, you know, you're here for a all female wrestling TV series. And we were like, wow. And a third of the girls got up and left. And so, of course, I was young, I was 21, and I figured, you know what, this is what I'm here for. I was pursuing a, an acting career. So I thought, you know what, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to see what this is about and see how far I can get, if I could get a call back. And so that's what I did. So basically, you, you originally thought it was going to be just regular acting, correct? You had no yeah. idea of wrestling? No, because they didn't say anything other than they said that if you had any kind of athletic background, um, that could be helpful. So we didn't know. We didn't know what kind of, we knew it was for a pilot, but we didn't know what it yeah. was. So we just thought it was, you know, a TV series of some kind and that maybe it involved some kind of stunt work or who knows what, because they did say if you were athletic, that it would be helpful. So when you finally found out that it was wrestling, at what point did you think in your head, I could really get hurt at doing this? I didn't really think about that. I just thought, you know what, I, I could really get into this because I was, I was a, a tomboy and I grew up between two brothers. Uh, both are 14 months, one's 14 months older, one's 14 months younger. And so we were very close and I basically did everything with my brothers. So I was into roughhousing and playing football and basketball and baseball and all of that. So I wasn't concerned about the getting hurt part, um, it didn't even really cross my mind, which is ironic that that's how it ended my career. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I wasn't concerned with that. I basically was like, okay, this sounds like a lot of fun. I'm waiting to see what it all entails, you know? So I was okay with that. Okay, cool. So how was it filming that first episode and how did the training go about? How did you learn how to wrestle? Well, once we got the callbacks and we were advised that they were putting us through, then they, they took a, a group of girls. They were only initially looking for the 12 
characters for the pilot episode to then take that to sell you know at the conventions because it was syndicated um so we ended up going down to uh, a, a gym where mondo guerrero was our trainer and so we were lucky we had you know good training tra uh, wrestling dynasty and and so we were in a um a gym in the watts area which was not you know the, the greatest area but it was um an experience and uh we basically just you know showed up and everybody was there excited to see what it was going to be like and then mondo went through basics and saying this is what it's going to be like and you know what have you and so we started doing tumbling basic tumbling and you know he'd show us how to you know take a bump and you know all this and then there was one day where the girls weren't paying attention and so he took the first girl that was near him and he grabbed her and put her in a headlock and he put her in a sleeper hold and knocked her out and so she was like on the floor and everybody is just like what the heck you know and so he said well he says this is to show you guys that if you're not paying attention someone's going to get hurt and you need to pay attention this is what I will do if you guys keep messing around. So everybody paid attention at that point. And we had already experienced wrestlers. We did have um, uh, salt and pepper. So we had the two that had been professional wrestlers already. And so they were experienced. So, you know, he didn't have any problem with them, but it was like the rest of us. And there was a whole lot at the beginning, I don't know, maybe 35 girls and they needed to weed that down to 12. So he got our attention and then from there on, it was just, you know, we'd learn something every day. And then of course, every couple of days, they'd be weeding them out. You know, um, Mondo would be working with Matt and David McLean. And so every day we're like, oh, where's that girl? Oh, where's that girl? And so, you know, girls were just weeding out. And so we were just hoping that we were the one, you know, that we would stay around. And then it got down to like the bare minimums. And then they were looking at, who could do the wrestling and then who was fitting into the characters that they had in mind. So like they looked at it and if they were looking for a Royal Hawaiian, well, Tammy Jones wasn't going to be a Royal Hawaiian. So that helped my chances, you know, and so just the different characters that they already had in mind that they were looking at the girls that were still being able to get through the training, were able to um, learn the wrestling and, um, had the personalities and the character types that they were looking for. So it was great because by the end of it, I made it through. <laughs> yep, and you did a great, great job at that. So how much of yourself and what you wanted to do, you, you were actually able to put into the character of Royal Hawaiian? Or was it more that they created a lot of that? Everything, basically, it was, it was perfect because it just fell in my lap. Um, at the time, you know, I, I hula dance and I've been dancing since I was about six. And <clears throat> in addition to my acting and modeling and all of that, but it basically, they said the Royal Hawaiian and I'm like, yeah, that's me, you know, and they pretty much let us do and take on the character and create the character and all of that. So if, if they liked what we were doing, they didn't really say anything. You know, if the girls were not, um, developing their character enough then they would start giving suggestions and okay how about this and how about that but they were open to whatever we wanted to do and so when they said royal hawaiian and i was going to be a bad girl that was right up my alley i was like oh yes i could do this and then i i created the part of getting the pineapples and i was going to do something since i was a bad girl i started crushing pineapples so every you know time they'd ask us, okay, well, what do you think you want to do? And, you know, most of the interviews were all impromptu, so they weren't scripted. I mean, the storylines were and all that, but when we did the, the interviews that you see us on in the little box, you know, clips on the actual match in the episodes, those are where they just brought us in and said, okay, this is, this is the situation. We want you to talk about your upcoming match, what, this, that, and the other, and they just let us go. You know, they'd ask us a question and we'd just respond however we wanted. So it was all off the cuff. Yeah, that was great because you had some great promos, her <clears throat> specifically even like Americana doing some promos, uh, talking about her and stuff. You were great at doing that. That was great. Yeah. And then your raps as well. How did you come up with your raps? Um, basically, they just told us, you know, um, come up with a couple raps and 
you know, include stuff that you think would be. So like on one, I talked about me doing the hula, you know, um, I forget what it is, the Royal Hawaiian and I love to hula. I got pretty flowers, but don't let that fool you. I jump from the ropes and I turn you to, I turn, well, I don't know what, it, I forget what it is. But anyway, it's that to where we got to include, you know, our character things and just different stuff. So it's amazing that the fans remember all of our raps, just like you do. And I, I don't even remember them all. You know, I mean, we only had three, but it's like, okay, wait, what's my rap? And when we've been at shows before, we've had fans come up and recite our raps. And it's like, wow. And they, and they, not just one girl, but they'll go through several girls and say, you know, I know this one's rap and I know this one's rap. And I'm like, you guys are amazing. It's like crazy. But so that's how we did it. We just basically made, made things up that we thought would, you know, talk about our, ourselves. And so it was a lot of fun. We had, we had a lot of fun with the raps. And then with the fans, I'm sure the fans enjoyed everybody who got to see it live, obviously. I bet they really enjoyed it a lot. So oh, what yeah. was basically <clears throat> like your typical work week working for GLOW? Well, for me, it was a little bit more than the average um, because I ended up playing two characters. And a lot of people don't know that I played Sarah of the Sarah Mabel um, Hillbilly Girl, the tag team with... Um, uh, my part, my tag team partner was Ashley. So she played Mabel. And so they don't know that. So I did have to work on two characters. Plus I was one of the trainers for season one. So after we got through with the pilot and we were trained by Mondo Guerrero, then we trained the new girls. So Americana and I were the trainers for season one. And then later on they had like Debbie Dallas and, um, uh, Debbie Debutant, Nanushka, there were quite a few of them that afterwards they took place and, and, and helped out with the training of the new girls. So I had all that, plus we ended up having to go to uh, production meetings so that we could tell <clears throat> the writers who did we think was good enough um, that they could do a singles match versus a tag team or who wasn't cutting it, or who was doing really well, or here's an idea and stuff like that. So when, like Hollywood, I always tell Hollywood, she only played her character, which was a great character, and she requested a room. I, I lived in the towers. She lived by the pool. So when she was done with her training, Hollywood was by the pool. So guess what? She got to spend some sun time well, I was inside because I had to then go over the matches with all the other different characters, right? And then, of course, my second match. And so then meetings. And so I didn't get a lot of pool time. So it was a pretty busy week for me. But, you know, we had scattered time here and there. But I didn't have as much free time as some of the other girls just because I had a couple other things to do. So it was filmed at the Riviera Hotel which yeah. uh, unfortunately isn't, isn't there anymore. anymore. But um, so did you have a roommate? It, did you have to live there? I did, and, so, so who and everybody would be shocked, but my roommate was Americana. So everybody's <laughs> like, your roommate was your opponent? You know, your, your nemesis is like, <clears throat> like, yeah. I said, you know, we, we roomed, but like I said, we did so much that we were hardly in our room, you know? But I mean, we, we were roommates, so in, in passing and crossing, and so we did, you know, different stuff at different times. So sometimes we were together, sometimes we, were, we weren't. And, and of course we had to uh, pretend like, you know, kayfabe and not, not be goody goody and friends in the public. So we, you know, took different routes to get back to the room and weren't walking down the halls together and stuff like that. So, um, but we did, we roomed together and everything was, you know, good. We were good roommates and yeah, so everything was good. No one ever believes that. They're like, oh, <laughs> <roommate."> <laughs> yeah. What was some of your favorite matches while on the show? Um, well, of course, the pilot um, episode is always, I think, going to be one of my favorites because it was the first thing I did. And it did have some of the key, you know, moves. And, and because it was new, we were excited. And it was the first thing. And we got to do the wishbone and get, you know, Americana. And um, Spanish Red and I were tag team partners. So we, um, we worked that together and we had California Doll, the original California Doll. So um, that's one of my, excuse me, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. And, um, 
And then, of course, my matches with Americana were just, you know, really good because we worked so well together. Um, and then the one that I, I always talk about is um, against Debbie Dallas. And um, it was Corporal Kelly and I. So we were, you know, two of the bad, the bad girls. And it was uh, um, Debbie Dallas and was it um California doll. California doll right California doll and so that one just because the experience with um California doll um she was not and I'm thinking was that the original California doll no that was the no, it was the second was like the second California one right doll. it was it was um Jane and um so being with those two rough <clears throat> houses which were you know working with Corporal Kelly and then you know uh, Dallas, the killer tomato, because she was experienced in such that she was, you know, one of the better wrestlers, of course. So that was a good, that was fun, you know, but then anything else, you know, I mean, I had a good time, you know, with whatever we did. And then, and then the Sarah and Mabel were always just a comical kind of thing. And I would say those were a little bit more challenging because to me, because I do have a distinctive deep voice, that I thought for sure, if I use my same voice, they're gonna know. And nobody, a lot of people, even to this day, didn't know I was Sarah. And so we kind of use that high pitch, the, the high pitch voice, you know. And so Ashley and I tried to change our voices. So that was a challenge. Oh my gosh, here comes my doggy. Um, so, but that's that. You know, everything I think was fun. I mean, most of them were were exciting matches and stuff. So. So, so how did you get to be chosen to also do Sarah and Mabel? How did that come about? I don't know. I guess, you know, when I first um, came on, I told Matt that, you know what, I'm willing to give 110% and whatever you need me to do, you know, I'm, I'm up for that. Um, oh gosh, I'm sorry, I'm getting stuff in the background. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So, um, babies, so um, really I think it was when I talked to Matt at the very beginning and I told him, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to give 110%. Um, I don't believe in a casting couch. Um, if you'd like me to do whatever you want, I am up for any extra, you know, help that you need and I'm available you know I said so let me know and so then they approached and said well you know what we're thinking how about a second second character and I said yeah I'm game you know whatever you know you think I can do that that'd be great and so that's kind of how that came about and then they asked Ashley you know to do the other characters so that was a lot of fun okay and, and, and why did you wind up leaving Glow? I left Glow because I had a couple injuries along the way so I did like I, I broke or broke or fractured or whatever you want to say, fingers. <clears throat> I dislocated a shoulder. Um, I had tripped uh, pre-glow season one. It was in the um, Tom Schneider um, interviews that we did on some of the promos before the show actually came out. And that's when I was wrestling barefooted and I twisted an ankle, which I kind of re-injured an old basketball injury. And then the big thing was, is when I hurt my back. So we had worked on some faulty equipment and I ended up um, being really bad. So I ended up having to leave and go back to LA, um, go to the doctors and they checked it out. And as it was, I ended up having um, two bulge discs, which they didn't know if it was something that was going to need surgery. But in any case, they said, we don't recommend that you continue. And then they said, and do you plan on having a family? And I said, well, what do you mean? They said, are you planning to have kids? And I said, well, <laughs> I'm 21. I said, I eventually, I said, yes, I envision myself having kids. I'd like to have a family. And um, so they said, well, if that's the case, um, you know, you might want to think about it and, you know, rethink returning to that kind of physical activity because we don't suggest it. And so I took the recommendation and I decided not to. Now, the, the one thing that I do regret is that I ended up um, not going back at all, which I'm kind of stupid, but what did I know? I, they just told me don't. So I left on good terms with, you know, Matt and David and everything, but I didn't even think 
And, and as it is, I never went back, so I never got any of my costumes. So all of my stuff basically was in the, I think Johnny C said they, would, they were in storage for a long time and what have you. What, whatever happened to them, I have no idea because they've never resurfaced. Nobody has them. Nobody knows where they are. Um, so I never even went back to the location. And um, I think that had I thought about it a little more is I could have told Matt and David, you know what, I'm game to come back and you know, to continue being a trainer or maybe do um, commentating with David or side interviews, you know, behind the scenes, something kind of like all the things that are in wrestling today. Right. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I don't think that was even, I don't even think they thought about it. Like, would she come back and do something else? And it was never really talked about. So I kind of just went on my merry way and got a real job, you know, and I, I went to work for uh, my mom worked for the airlines. And so I went, to work and I worked for the airlines for 25 years and you know had a career and I started a family and the whole nine yards so it was you know in hindsight now I kick myself because I think God I could have been I could have been active and participated in all four seasons and traveled and whatever else but it just was like a dumb kind of thing where no one ever said anything I never said anything so it kind of just went by the wayside and was just you know a gone, you know, part of my life, just that chapter closed and another one opened and, you know, it is what it is. And now I think with us being 35 years later and here I am still working, doing glow events and interviews like this with you and um, touring the country with Hollywood and lightning and, and doing different things and different projects and stuff. I said, it's amazing that who would have thought we'd be talking today? you know, about GLOW that happened in the 80s. Exactly. So after so many years, you know, I'm assuming obviously everybody started losing touch with one another. And then through the invention of the internet, Facebook, all that stuff. And then there was the GLOW documentary in 2012. How did you kind of find your way back into GLOW and meeting all the girls again after all those years? Well, you know, for me, because I had left the show, I did lose contact. Um, with most of them at, at that point. And then I had moved to Hawaii. So I, I lived in Hawaii for 25 years. And um, during that time, I had little contact. And then Angelina, um, Little Egypt, is the one who eventually contacted me through, um, I don't know, I can't remember, Facebook or someone was able to you know, tell her where I was. And um, that's how I got in contact where I participated in the reunion. So that was very cool and I was happy about that because I know there's some girls that were not able to be found at that time and and kind of feel like oh you guys just left me out and it really wasn't that you know it was a matter of being able to try and find girls you know that was the thing so um it was great that you know she organized all that got in touch with as many girls as they could and um and then I was able to go to the the reunion because a lot of people always ask well we see the documentary and, and we saw that um, you were a big part of GLOW at the beginning, you know, from the original uh, pilot, but we don't see you in the documentary. And I said, well, yeah, because that was because I wasn't around. And so I just didn't, I said, I'm in there because I was at the reunion. So you see me and then they show clips and all that, but I wasn't interviewed. And I said, you know, it's, it's okay. I said, it's not a big, you know, not a big deal personally. I don't, I don't, you know, think that that's anything, um, of significance. I mean, if they had asked me to do it, of course I would have, but um, it, it was great just to be involved in Fiji's, um, you know, reunion and being able to do that. Cause I did um, the last couple of years of Fiji's life as I spend a lot of time with her. So yeah, um, the reunion I that I looked My next question. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. What, that's okay. Um, what are your memories of Mountain Fiji? Well, for her, we always, you know, we didn't get to work a lot together. And, I, you know, I don't know, everybody always asks, well, how come they never had like a, a bad girl Royal Hawaiian against Mountain Fiji and Little Fiji, you know? And I'm like, you know what? I don't know. I said I wasn't a writer. So the way things, you know, panned out was always the writers and the director and, of course, David and how they saw things progress and which matches and so on. I said, so there are some that I would have loved to, you know, I would have loved to wrestle uh, Tina Ferrari. I would have loved to tag team with uh, Jungle Woman. And of course, I would have loved to try something with BG, right? Get the island girls together. But that never happened. But we did work together, you know. So since we were, you know, 
at the same time. Um, so that was always fun. But after Glow, um, when it was all over and, and what have you, um, I did get to continue to stay in communication with her. And so for the last like two to three years of her life, I, I spent time with her going to the different convalescence that she was in and you know I followed her from one place she was so cute because she'd call me like every week like clockwork give me her hi princess and how are you and this is mountain Fiji and here's my phone number and this is where I'm at and please call me and you know and like I didn't know her information right but she was so cute she just went through her whole little dialogue and she just couldn't wait for me to come visit. And she always wanted like her McDonald's and had to have her Coke. She wanted a Coke and, and she had whichever facility she was at, she had like a helper. And so she'd say, oh, Joe would like to have this. And she put her order in. And then of course I took her all her, her little goodies, like her treats. She loved all her um, like bath um, gels and all her smelly things, you know, to uh, the soaps that she liked them to bathe her in. And, all her smelly foo-foo and and she loved to write so she always continued to write to her fans so I would um get her note cards and just pre-stamp everything for her so all she had to do is write her card and then address them but she didn't have to worry about you know postage and all that so I used to do that and then with the holidays I would send her her little goodies take her her little goodies and you know for whatever holiday whether it be valentine's day or saint patrick's day or christmas she used to put all her stuff on her bulletin board on her wall and she loved that and so we did we we, we spent some good time together i have great memories of that and then um you know unfortunately we lost her in 2017 and um it was a beautiful you know service i spoke at her um service and there was about till oh, 15 20 of us girls and and matt simber and his wife and so it was a real good representation of glow and stuff so that was i have fond very fond memories of her and i you know i've stayed in touch with her family and um they're all very nice you know and they 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 really didn't realize how big of an impact she had with glow and with the fans that you know when we were at the service and meeting some of like the nieces and the nephews and the aunts and the uncles and they're like wow we just really didn't know the extent of her popularity and what she did for glow and we're like oh yeah she was the icon of glow and you know letting them know how exciting it was to work with her and that the fans just you know were ecstatic to even meet her and stuff like that. So it was it was a great time and, and great memories always. Yep, I mean, M Mount Fiji was the heart of GLOW. Yeah. You know, she was the center. She always had a smile on her face, positive attitude. The, the children loved her. Yeah. And you can see it too when they came out with the GLOW Netflix that a character was basically based right. on Mountain Fiji. Exactly. So I want to ask you about what are your thoughts on GLOW Netflix and how you're enjoying watching the show? Um, I actually was one that um, from day one, I just thought it was awesome because anything glow is just a tribute to what we did in the eighties. So um, when it first came out, there was some, some girls that were kind of sitting on the fence. Some of them were definitely not for it. They were actually kind of bad mouthing it, you know, and um, then they changed their tune and then everybody kind of started to realize, because they said, well, that's not how our show was. Well, of course not, it's Netflix. And they basically um, are gonna try and get viewers and sex and drugs gets viewers. So they had put some of that stuff in the storyline, which definitely was not our show because our family, our show was a family show, but I liked it from the day it came out. Um, I looked at it as a positive thing and Obviously, we did something back in the 80s for them to think that this is something they, they wanted to make a show about. So that was always an honor, you know. I mean, we, we thought it was, you know, a little bit um, uh, not true to form. So it's not, you know, exactly 100% accurate, which is okay because it's a show that they're trying to gather viewers and uh, adding the characters and they couldn't use our exact characters. So they did do a combination of, and then of course change the names. So like my favorite would be like Britannia where it's, it's a Godiva mixed with um, uh, Zelda, Zelda the Rape. 
Yeah. Right. So that like the combination of that, I thought was very uh, creative and I liked it and I liked the character. So she's one of my favorites. But, you know, you look at all the different characters and there you could see the similarities and then you could see all the the new things that maybe they've added or combined. So that was kind of neat that they did that. So um, I liked it. I mean, I really did. And then I, I met finally. Um, I'm actually um, managing a male wrestler. His name's Otto Von Clutch. And we were doing a show and I met Kia for the first time. And so I was like, oh, wow. I said, you know, cause a lot of the girls had gone to different functions and they had met some of the cast and I had not, and I hadn't ever met her. And she was just so nice. And I said, do you mind, can we take a picture? And she says, yeah, but you know what? Can you wait and let me get my garb on and let me get in character and then we'll take a picture. And I was like, yeah, cool. And so it was very neat to, to meet her. And um, I haven't met any of the other cast members and stuff, but you know, I see all the pictures of the different girls that have gotten to go on, you know, whatever event they were at and they got to meet them and stuff. So it's great. It's just been a, a positive thing. And because of that show, of course, there's been the resurgent for us to be um, out and doing events again and, and more events. And people are excited to see that we're coming back out and we're doing things. And, and then we have all the millennials that they see the glow signs at our events and then they see us and they're like, Oh, and who are you? And we're like, we're the OG girls. And they're like, huh? They're like, there was actually a show. And they're shocked because they just think that Glow Netflix was this new show. And, and we're like, And well, Generation Z. Yes. Generation Z, we've got to call yes. some of them too. Yeah, so we have all the generations that were like, well, then, so what do you mean? And so we'd show them, you know, well, look, here's, our, here's a book that has all of our memorabilia from the 80s. And they're like, wow we just never knew that there was a show and then they'll go back and look at the YouTube videos and stuff like that so that's why we're still trying to work on getting you know a four season DVD box set I'm still trying to work and bug Matt Simber and see if we can get something done because everybody would love to have that you know the the stuff on YouTube is great but what the people are missing is the episodes in their entirety where they get to see all the comedy they get to see the skits the rapping the music videos all of that so i'm hoping that at some point that we'll be able to you know be something that we can bring to the fans yeah because that would be great so we're going to wrap it up here pretty soon but one more question we mm -hmm. want to ask you is a lot of people may not know this but you were on the Family Feud a couple times. <laughs> yes, you and your family. And I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about that. Um, we actually were. Um, my family was on a one time with my dad, my mom, and my two uncles, my dad's two brothers. And we were a mixed family. So Asian with Hispanic and Greek and French and all that. And so we, we were on and they liked us so much because they look for minority families. They're always in need of minority families. So we went on the show and then they asked us to come back and they contacted us and said, would you like to come on again? And we said, yeah, sure we would, you know, why, why would we turn it down? And then they asked us again. So by the time they asked us again, my brothers were grown at the time because before they were very introverted. At least I was in the industry and I was pursuing that. So even though I was younger, I was still able to go on the show. So then the next time it was my mom and my dad, myself and my two brothers. And then that time it was with Ray Combs. The first time it was with Richard Dawson. So we had a lot of fun. It was great. We did win. We won prizes. We won money. And, you know, I have a lot of fans that always catch it on like, um, all the different, what are those? The, the different game show games, network. The game Buster. show network and all of that. And so they'll actually text me and they'll go, you're on, you're on here. Your family feud episode is on. Or I had one fan tape the whole thing. He taped it with his um, iPhone. And so then he sent me that and then said, okay, well, I didn't get to call you right away. He said, but I taped it all. And so I think it's great because I do have it on video somewhere. It's in storage. I'm still yet to find it, but I'll probably find it soon. But so I have a lot of those and everybody just thinks it's awesome. And at the time, you know, it was just right after Glow. So I actually picked up Ray Combs in a beer hug and I, you know, lifted him off the ground, just like in the one when the Glow Girls did it and they 
picked up, I can't remember who the host was at the time. I think it was, it was, Ray, it was Ray Combs. Yeah. Right. And so they, they did that. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, we, I, I would really like to get us, the original Glow Girls, to get on a show on Family Feud with the Netflix girls. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be a fun thing. And so I've, I've tried to maybe see if I can get in contact with the contact that used us. Um, it's just, I, ha I just haven't had the time and, and really to doing it. Actually, somebody did try to help me um, track down those episodes and we thought we were gonna get them to be able to, to get copied for us, but it, we ran into a roadblock, so. so. So did you guys win the Fast Money? Did you get to go to Fast we Money? We did. On one of the shows, we did win the Fast Money. So I'm going to have to try and track them down and get them so we can play them, you know, at some point in time and, and see. Who knows? Okay. And can you let the fans know how they can get in contact with you? What's the best way? Sure. Um, for anybody um, watching this who may want, you know, you to go to a convention absolutely. or something. Yeah. On Facebook, it's April Hom. Um, April Hom, H-O-M, like Mary. And that's um, Facebook. And then if you go on uh, Instagram, it's Royal Hawaiian 25. Um, Twitter, it's glow underscore royal. My email is aprilhom25 at gmail.com. And if you have any activities or events that are coming up in your area, send me an email, let me know. Um, Hollywood and I will try and see what we can do to get us or um, a group of girls out. If it's um, something local in California, we got a lot of girls here. But yeah, send us a text, let us know, or an email, let us know what you'd like to. Also Messenger, if you um, use Messenger, you can always get a hold of me through Messenger as well. All right, thank you very much for joining us today, You're April. You're welcome, thanks, and, Mike. And thank you guys for watching, and keep it right here for more of the Mike Grand Show, because we're going to have some more girls on this show and do some more great interviews about GLOW. So everybody stay tuned, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.